Scorpios are most often associated with hot sex and bad tempers, but the truth of the matter is that Scorpios are some of the most intellectual and spiritual people in all of the Zodiac. Scorpios are known for their intuition, their intensity, their mystique, and their passion. Scorpio is the eighth Zodiac sign and is ruled by the planets of Mars and Pluto. It also makes up one third of the triad of water signs along with Cancer and Pisces. If you were born between the dates of October 23rd and November 21st, that makes you a sun sign Scorpio. And by default, that means I think that you are awesome. Now keep in mind, sun sign is just a small aspect of your actual natal chart. But in terms of horoscopes, in terms of how we identify each other, in terms of if somebody asks like, what's your sign? That would make you be a Scorpio. This channel is probably 75, 80% Scorpio. And I absolutely love that. We're doing a very special video today. We're going to be talking about the evolutionary process of the sign of Scorpio. You may or may not have heard about this. I'm hoping that if you have heard about it, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight that might be new. And if you're brand new to this concept, hold on because Scorpio as a sign has something that is fairly unique. Not every sign has this type of journey. So if you're a Scorpio or you have a Scorpio in your life that you're just trying to understand a little bit better, this video will help you pinpoint where you or that Scorpio is at in this evolutionary process of how they harness their energy and express their own vibration. Hey guys, it's Keegan. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome for the first time. Uh, I'm super excited about this video as a Scorpio myself. It's always fun when I sit down to do a Scorpio based video. This one in particular, I'm super excited about simply because I think this is something that a lot of Scorpios don't understand about themselves. It's something that maybe some people haven't been exposed to. There's lots of different approaches to this. I'm going to talk about my own way of categorizing this, my own approach to it, what I personally believe. I just wanted to sit down and do this particular video and uh, see how it turns out, honestly. I have to tell you guys, I've been in a really uh, interesting space in my own life. I'm not going to talk too much about that. I'm probably going to do an update video for you guys and post that separately, but life's been really good. It's been really, really amazing. And I've been taking the time to just focus on that and enjoy it, which has felt, uh, fairly amazing to just be present. I have seen the comments. I've seen the request. I've seen the, where are you? Why are you not posting what's going on? Again, there's going to be a video that is specific to all of that information that I will put out just for the people who want to know about it. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a bit of a dialogue I'm sure around that. Now I did post a video a couple of weeks back that is about happiness. And if you've not checked out that video, I'll put a link up. I'm not sure which side it's going to go on because I can never remember how to make my brain think about that, but there will be something that pops up here that will be a link to that happiness video. And if you have not seen the other Scorpio specific video that I did, which is Scorpio Secrets Exposed. I'll put a link up to that one as well. That video has been so fun because uh, it was the first video that I did that wasn't specific to tarot. Uh, that was just me talking about a sign and giving some characteristics of it. And the response to that video has been awesome. It's currently my fifth most watched video. It's been having a bit of a moment the past month. I'm not sure what's going on, but the views have really taken off in the past month. If you are a Scorpio and you've not seen that video, go watch it and then go into the comments and hang out there. Watch this video, of course, first, but go make, just make a mental note to go watch that one as well. Uh, the comments section is so much fun. It's so Scorpio. It's just comments from nothing but Scorpios talking about different aspects of the video and, and making suggestions about things that I should talk about in the next video that's related to that. So uh, if you want, just go hang out there. It's super fun. So we are going to talk about the Scorpio evolutionary process as promised. I do just want to make one plea with you guys first before I dive into that. And that is to go follow me on Instagram. I'm on Instagram. It's Keegan Tarot there as well. I want to do more with Instagram. I think I could actually have a lot of fun with it. I want to do maybe like a little daily spread or have some sort of Instagram story where I'm just connecting with you guys in a different way. The problem is I forget to mention Instagram in these videos when I do them. And then you guys don't know to go follow me there because you don't know that I'm there. And then because there is no audience really right now on Instagram, I don't do a lot. Uh, so you can help me 
by going over and following me there. I'll start doing more stuff there on a regular basis. Uh, that would probably be the easiest way to connect with me daily. If you're interested in that, I'll figure out what I'm doing and I'll get to a schedule and a routine. It's just when I go and there aren't a lot of people there and I don't get a lot of interaction, it's hard for me to keep my focus and attention on it. And I don't do anything. I wanted to make that plea with you guys because I suspect a lot of Scorpios are going to watch this video and it would be fun to have you guys join me over on Instagram and see what we come up with in terms of fun things that we do there together. One last thing before I dive into this, if you are watching me for the first time or if you've been lurking on my videos and have not yet taken a moment to subscribe, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, join, make the community a little bit bigger, help me feel better because I'm a little bit needy and I like attention and I want to see the subscriber count go up. I do want to encourage you to hit subscribe. It really helps the channel. It helps the videos reach people that need to hear them. And it also just really gives me a boost. and makes me feel like I want to sit down and do more of these videos more frequently. Now today I'm going to be talking about something that's a little bit unique to Scorpio. Scorpio actually has a fairly well-documented and well-understood evolutionary process. And when I talk about an evolutionary process of the sign, what I'm talking about is how Scorpio deals with its own vibrational energy. There's a little bit of uh, confusion around this particular concept if you just go to Google and you put it in. Some people are going to say there are seven phases, some are going to say five. The uh, you know the animals that are associated with the different phases, they're all over the place. To keep things simple here on YouTube, I mean you're talking about three specific phases using three specific animals. Now if you've heard about this in a different way, if you personally have this as something in your mind that is five steps or seven levels, or if you have an eagle or a dove, it's okay. We're talking about the same thing because basically what we're talking about is how Scorpios manage to deal with raising their vibrational energy. Now I do want to say for me personally, I don't necessarily view these as being ranked from like worst to best. I see it more as just being distinct phases in which Scorpios exist. There might actually be an argument to be made in terms of a karmic energy or just some spiritual purpose of a Scorpio who spends most of their life exploring the lower vibrational energies. This video isn't gonna talk a ton about that, but if it's something that you would like me to talk about uh, more, just in terms of karmic energy and why someone might manifest into a life where most of that life is heavy, most of that life has a lot of pain or suffering, I'm happy to do that video. This is something that I've actually spent a lot of time myself trying to wrap my own head around because seeing suffering in the world, seeing people who are going through heavy things, experiencing pain myself, I hate it. One thing that I've discovered is that there is actually a very deep aspect of human experience that requires people who are willing to go through heavy, painful things. So if that is something that you would like for me to talk a little bit more about, go into the comments below. Let me know you're interested in that. I'll add it to my list of video ideas that I want to do over the next couple of months. And I would love to do that video if there's enough uh, interest and curiosity from you guys. All right, so let's talk about the first phase of Scorpio evolution, and that is the phase of the Scorpion. Now, Scorpios who exist within this first phase of evolution in terms of their ability to deal with their own vibrational energy. And if you aren't familiar with the term vibrational energy. It's how we tend to interact with the world, how we tend to interact with ourselves and other people. It's what's going on inside of us and how we're motivated to respond to our environment. Now, one of the things to keep in mind as I'm talking about this is that what's going on internally for us, what's going on in our minds, what's going on inside, with, like how our spirit is feeling, that actually begins to shape and cultivate and create the world that is reflected back to us. And that's the world that we get to interact with. So in phase one, when a Scorpio is interacting on the Scorpion level, they're mostly driven out of their instinct. They're trying to survive. They see the world as a bit of a scary place full of predators and potential threats. So since the Scorpio in this phase is operating mostly through their emotions and their instincts, their vibrational energy is fairly low. So they can be reactive, vengeful. They can get a bit obsessed with sadness and they exist in a state that is best described as pretty much nonstop melancholy. Depression, self-destructive behavior, toxic relationships, these things are all hallmarks of a Scorpio that's existing primarily within phase one associated with the Scorpion. Addictive behaviors are also fairly common for Scorpios that are existing within phase one. For phase one Scorpios, at the slightest perceived threat, 
these Scorpios will lash out. The stinger aspect of the sign of Scorpio is very heavily associated with phase one in terms of the evolution and what's going on with the energy of that person. Now, what's interesting about this is for phase one Scorpios, they're not the only phase that will use the stinger, but what's a distinguishing factor for phase one Scorpios versus the other phases is that phase one Scorpios, when they do lash out, when they attack and they let the stinger loose, they tend to then rush away they run and hide and they try to find some place where they can hide out and just feel safe. So during this phase, Scorpios trust virtually no one. They are loners. They stay in the shadows. They tend to avoid people and they're terrified of making connections or being vulnerable. Scorpion level Scorpios tend to feel fairly unsafe and they wear their pain and their trauma almost like a suit of armor to keep people away and to try to keep themselves feeling like they are safe and in control. They typically tend to feel like no one will ever really truly understand them or see them. And they think about concepts such as love and relationships as being things that people fall into when they don't really understand how the world really is because scorpion level Scorpios don't trust other people and because they don't have that ability to trust, they haven't cultivated that ability to trust within themselves yet, they can't imagine being able to have something that is healthy or something that makes them feel safe in terms of a romantic connection or even sometimes like a friend connection with another person. The truth of the matter is, however, that this lower vibrational existence this phase one scorpion existence is something that is mandatory for every single Scorpio on this planet. This is where we all start. And it's interesting because I have actually dealt with kids who are Scorpios and they are some of the most suspicious kids that you'll ever find. It's almost like the default setting. It's our factory setting. When we come out into the world, Scorpios naturally are going to be a little bit suspicious. We're going to be a little bit cautious and we're going to need to have some time to figure out what we're going to do next. And as I mentioned, some of us, some Scorpios will stay in this space for most of their life, if not all of their life. And there's no judgment in that. Again, there could be a reason why someone would stay within that lower vibrational energy and experience it. Okay. But if you are listening to this and this is sounding like where you're at and you don't want to be there anymore, I'm going to talk to you about the other two phases. And again, I don't see these as necessarily being like bad, better, best. I don't necessarily see it that way, but it can feel that way to you. And if you feel that there's a need for you to try to raise your energy, to raise your vibration and get to the higher level, then keep watching because I'm gonna to talk to you about how to know when you get into that space. All right, so let's talk about the second phase for Scorpio. And for me, I am using the Eagle as being the descriptor for the second phase of Scorpio. Now, what's great about the second phase is that Scorpios begin to move away from relying on their emotions and their instincts, and instead they really start to harness the power of their intellect. Scorpios who are in the phase two are very often uh, referred to as detectives. Eagle Scorpios are going to pay so much attention to details. They look at people's body language. They listen to the words that people use. They keep track of information and they pile it away in their minds so that they can go back to it later. Very often Eagle phase Scorpios will listen to what you say make a mental note of it and remind themselves in a week or a month to come back around and verify that information with you. And they do it in a very specific way because they're trying to overcome that natural instinct that, that they have to rely on their instincts. They're trying to use their mind to convince themselves, hey, maybe there are some people in this world that I can trust, but they do it in a very specific way because they're using their mind. They are focused solely on how they can prove facts, how they can look at things and be able to show themselves that something is trustworthy. Someone is trustworthy. This is how Scorpios begin to learn who they can trust and who they need to avoid. And one of the things that happens as a result of developing that particular skill is that they start to have people who they can let in. Now, they don't let them in all the way. They'll let people in, but they do keep them a little bit at a distance. It takes a long time to get in close. It's a gradual process. Now, if you're dealing with a Scorpio and you're watching this video trying to figure it out, know that if a Scorpio is on any level, 
giving you the opportunity to get to know them, if they're giving you any opportunity to get in close, if they're spending time with you, if they're sharing any amount of personal information, they care about you. They're trying their best to overcome their instinctual fear of other people, their instinctual fear of being hurt. One thing to keep in mind about Scorpios is that Scorpios feel things in such an intense manner. So when they love, they feel it so deeply and it terrifies them. And when they love the wrong person and they then get hurt, it takes a very long time for a Scorpio to truly unravel that and to figure out how to trust and be open again. Now, Eagle phase Scorpios will form connections and those connections can be fairly healthy. But again, like I was saying, they're not going to be very deep. They might, they might have some depth to them. I wouldn't say they're superficial connections, but the Scorpio is going to have their guard up. Eagle phase Scorpios are very often identified as being mysterious or aloof. Eagle Scorpios value honesty above anything else. And they themselves are fairly brutally honest, almost to the point where it's deemed a fault by people who are having to be on the receiving end of what an Eagle phase Scorpio is saying. Eagle phase Scorpios are fiercely protective of their privacy. That can cause some people to actually label them as being secretive. It's not necessarily secretive behavior. It is just a method that they use to try to protect themselves and to keep some feeling of control. Because again, venturing out into forming connections and making these connections and being a little bit vulnerable triggers a lot of that lower level vibration. And if Scorpio hasn't fully dealt with that and healed it and, and stepped fully into phase two, as I mentioned, it can be easy to slip back down to that lower vibrational energy it have all of that trust that they've built become a little bit uneasy. Now, one of the biggest shifts that happens when a Scorpio moves from phase one to phase two is that during phase two in this eagle expression of Scorpio, Scorpios actually become very interested in other people. They start to see other people as being complex creatures that they want to try to understand. And the curiosity about other people and that desire to connect becomes a true motivating factor for those Scorpios who do start to raise their vibrational energy. Scorpios in this phase are typically very highly successful in their careers. Scorpios can have a bit of an obsessive quality to them. And when that obsession is focused on their career, it means that they're willing to put in longer hours, take on more projects, go further than most of their, their peers and colleagues would. And so a lot of times Scorpios in this particular phase start to see wild success that begins to manifest in their chosen careers. Their personal lives, on the other hand, can be a bit of a roller coaster with people coming in and out, relationships not necessarily remaining as stable as they want. And the reason for that is because during this phase two, as a Scorpio is learning to regulate their energy, one of the things that they really do not feel the need to regulate is their intensity. So people who are dealing with them usually are overwhelmed by the intensity at which Scorpio comes at them. And for the Scorpio, they see no reason at all to regulate this or to try to uh, have a different type of intensity based on the person that they're interacting with. That expression of intensity is one of the things that Scorpios in the eagle phase really values about themselves. They love the fact that they're intense people. They love the fact that their emotions are intense. The intensity with which they feel, even when they're feeling bad things, even if they're feeling sadness or depression or they're feeling anxiety, the experience of that emotion and being able to sit in it fully with full intensity, it's its addictive to a Scorpio that's in the eagle phase. Eagle phase Scorpios can become quite fixated on their status and their success, and that can become the full embodiment of their life. And again, this doesn't necessarily mean that they're better or worse than the other phases. It just means that's where their energy becomes fixed. But for some eagle phased Scorpios, an interesting thing happens. Now, one of the things that you've heard me talk about if you watch other tarot readers or if you've studied spirituality at all, your understanding about the concept of dark night of the soul is probably at least fundamentally there. If you're not familiar with that, you want me to talk about it more, go into the comments, let me know. I'm happy to do a video on the Dark Knight of the Soul. Having gone through that process myself, I can tell you it's very interesting and it's actually not as scary and terrifying as it sounds. But for Eagle Phase Scorpios, who do spend a lot of time having these in and outs with other people, caring about people, losing people, focusing on the career, if they get to a point where they start to feel like that isn't enough, 
something very interesting happens. Some type of life-changing event is going to occur. Now, this event might be something that's very painful, but it could also be something that is just overwhelmingly, unbelievably exciting that brings a ton of happiness into the Scorpio's life. Regardless of how it manifests, this event or potentially several events back to back makes it impossible for the Scorpio who has been existing at the Eagle phase to remain there. Suddenly everything that the Scorpio has thought that they understood about the world, all of the beliefs that they've spent time stacking up as being facts about the world are just stripped away. It's the ultimate in a tower moment. Scorpio in tarot is represented by the death card. And that is for a reason. Because when Scorpios hit the point where they suddenly are aware that everything they believe can be questioned, everything that they hold true about themselves, about other people, about the world could be wrong. Something incredible unleashes inside of that Scorpio and they suddenly feel themselves ascending to the next phase of Scorpio expression. And that is the level of the Phoenix. Now, a Phoenix level Scorpio takes a step back, looks at the ruins of the, the life that they had before, stretched out in front of them, and they feel a detachment. And this is something very new for Scorpio. Scorpios are very attached to people until they get to this particular phase. When they reach this point, they start to feel the stirrings of something new inside of them. And that is a true connection to the world, to themselves, to other people. As their ego starts to fall away from them, Phoenix level Scorpios start to understand that they're part of something that is much more complex than they've ever imagined. Mysticism, spirituality, these are things that Scorpios start to investigate and dive into. As a result of that, healing and dealing with trauma and unpacking pain from the past becomes the fixation point. For a Scorpio who has reached phase three and is expressing the Phoenix energy. So as I mentioned at the beginning, that phase one lower vibrational energy is something that is necessary for all Scorpios. The reason for that is because when a Scorpio reaches phase three and it's this Phoenix energy, they look back on all the pain and trauma and disappointment that they experienced and they begin to recognize that same pain and trauma in other people. And for a Scorpio who's in this upper level energy vibration, they're compelled to try to help people process that pain and trauma. They want to help. And because they went through those experiences themselves in such a deep way and typically went to the depths of the darkest aspects of life, they are actually able to help other people navigate those things and to help them realize that there is a way out of it, that there is a way to turn away from it and to make your life feel better. Now, again, the scorpion relied very much on instinct. The eagle was focused mostly on intellect. Now, the phoenix 100% is operating and making decisions and choices based on their intuition. What's really awesome about the Phoenix level expression and the vibrational energy is that all of that pain and trauma from the past and the things that the Scorpio has gone through, they become like a puzzle, a very interesting complex puzzle that Scorpio wants to solve and figure out. And all of the energy starts to shift. And instead of being fixated on the lower vibrational experiences, which is pain and disappointment and sadness and, and that feeling of melancholy and being depressed and being addicted to things and, and struggling. Higher level vibration Scorpios understand that because they've gone through those things, because they understand those emotions and they have that experience within them, by default, they can then understand the opposites just as intensely. And so Phoenix level Scorpios begin to think about happiness and what they can manifest into their life and the types of connections they can have and the depths that those connections can manage to have. If they can just open up and be honest and truthful. And this becomes the new obsession for Scorpio is being able to form a really deep bonds with people, being able to open up to people and develop trust. Phoenix level Scorpios often become obsessed with trying to see exactly how wonderful and amazing they can make their lives. Now you'll find a lot of Phoenix 
phase Scorpios doing work that helps other people. Now that could be what I'm doing here in this video, being able to help people. I do a lot of work with people one-on-one -on -one and personal readings, helping them navigate their lives, their trauma, deal with relationship issues, but other things that you might see uh, Phoenix phase Scorpios doing therapy work. You might see them becoming teachers. Any aspect where they're getting to help people deal with things, help shape people's lives, help people want better for themselves, help people navigate painful things. That is going to become the true calling for a Scorpio who has managed to get their vibrational energy up high enough that they can then focus that intensity that they naturally have towards bettering people and making their lives feel happier and more enriched. Now, Phoenix phase Scorpios still tend to keep their social circle fairly small, but within that circle, there is a depth and a richness and Scorpios are so happy to have found people that they can connect with. And they do have connections with people that span decades, if not their whole remaining life. They will stay loyal to the people who have shown up for them and have helped them to develop trust who have been there and have been patient with them and dealt with the different ups and downs and, and given a sense of stability to the Scorpio who is trying to regulate their intensity, trying to get control of their energy, trying to lift it up and get themselves into that higher expression. All right, so I'm super curious what you guys thought about this particular video. Where do you see yourself in the evolution of Scorpio, if you are a Scorpio, or if you're dealing with a Scorpio, where do you see that person? Now, again, I have no judgment. If you are expressing your Scorpio energy at that Scorpion level, that's fine. That's where you're at. There's not, a, there's no right or wrong, good or bad in this video. Now you can go online, you can read people who are absolutely gonna say that the lower level vibrational energy is bad and you should, we should all be aiming to you know, bring it up. Ideally, if you feel like you need to make a change, if you feel like you want to change things and you want to you know, raise your vibrational energy, then you should do that. But there are going to be people who come into this world and they chose to have a life that is mostly experiencing that lower vibrational energy. And there's a reason for that. There is a true spiritual purpose for it. Again, if you want to know more about that, let me know it in the comments and I'll do a video specific to that. Now, as I mentioned at the top of this video, I did want to do something special. So associated with this video, I'm going to do a separate video where I do a tarot reading that is about the evolutionary development of Scorpio. And I'm not quite sure how that's going to go yet. I haven't done it. I have a rough idea of what I want to do, but I'll put a link up to the video because I'm going to post them at the same time. So you can click through and watch that video. It's a reading based on this video and the concepts that I talk about here. So you can go over and watch that. Make sure that before you leave, you click on subscribe and join the channel. I want to see the channel grow. I really want to like double our subscriber count. I want to be able to have huge success here. And that depends on you just simply clicking on the subscribe button. If you want to get notifications from YouTube when I put up new video content, make sure you also click the bell notification icon. And if you're still here and you're curious and you might want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can send me an email, keegantero at gmail.com. I'll put that up here. And uh, if you want to work with me getting a personal reading, if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one in terms of working coaching aspect of some part of your life, shoot me an email. We can have a dialogue. I can send you details about how that might work. So if you like this video, make sure that you leave a comment. Leave a comment if you are a Scorpio. Leave a comment if you know a Scorpio. If you can spell Scorpio, go spell it down in the comments below. Just basically leave a comment. It helps the video get more traction with YouTube. It helps more people find the video that might enjoy it. Also, why not just go ahead and share this video on your social network sites? Let people understand you a little bit more if you are a Scorpio. Like, I, I get it. You know, we like being private. We like having our mystery. But sometimes we make people work a little bit too hard. Hard to figure us out. So I'm trying to create some videos for you guys that you can send to people that you care about just to give them a little bit of insight because it can be hard to talk about ourselves. We love hearing about other people, but talking about ourselves can be a bit of a struggle for Scorpio. I will see you guys again soon with another video. I love you so much and just want to say thank you for all of the support that you have shown me and your patience for me as I take some much needed breaks in between my own growth and spiritual evolution and just navigating life and the changes that have been coming in for me. I appreciate it so much. I can't even explain to you how much it means just to know that so many of you are rooting me on, 
sending me positive energy and wanting to see me succeed. It means the world to me. And I hope that the videos that I'm making and the content that I'm putting out is helping to enrich your life as well. I love you guys so much. Take care of yourself. If you are heading over to watch the video for the tarot reading associated with this particular topic, I will see you guys over there. If you don't want to go watch that for some reason, I'll throw up two other videos here that you can check out. I don't know what those might be. I will leave them up to chance and let YouTube decide what it's going to suggest to you because why question the all powerful algorithm? I love you guys, sending you so much positive energy and I'll see you again soon.